Uh, Yarell says, Nas Hip Hop is dead. Uh, Payola, False News, N Word, Web3 Music. Nas has been always a thorn to the industry and the media. Makes sense. Right. Speaking of which, I think that's a good transition on to the next guy. You know who else has been a thorn to the media as of late? Mr. Ye is all over the place. He's been a thorn um, to everybody, man. <laughs> right. And so there's so many places we can go with his Drink Champs uh, interview. But you know what? Let's just start here. What did you think about the interview overall? It's not as good as the first one. Okay. It's immediate thoughts. Immediate thoughts. <laughs> yeah. I think that there was a lot of good information in there. I think that um, it was overshadowed by, you know, some things that just shouldn't have been said, you know, things that were out of place, misspoke. You know, somebody, um, somebody brought up a good point to me. They said that, you know, the George Floyd comment, right? Somebody mm -hmm. brought up the fact that <laughs> they said he's still saying the cop killed him. He's just deferring on how it was done. He said they hit him with the fentanyl. And I was like, I never really thought about it in that in those terms. Obviously, all of it's still inappropriate. But it's it's a it's a way that the media is actually spinning it and not trying to find any kind of way to to add some level of context to what was said. You know what I mean? It real it reminds me of um it's very de baby like in a sense where it's like you're really saying things that actually weren't said but more so implied. Am I off base here? You're not off base. Mike, somebody's off base though. What's that? I mean, how did we get here with him? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, like I'm, 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 I'm a root cause. It's a whirlwind. Huh? That's a whirlwind, definitely. Yeah. Do you yeah. think, though, I mean, because we've seen what kind of week that he had leading up to the Drink Champs interview. Do you think that the interview was used for rating purposes? I mean, let's just be real. Um, because it seemed like, and we're talking about Nori and, you know, him apologizing at this point. What did you think about, you know, Nori's apology and I guess everything in context to the actual interview? What did you think about that? I think he's in a dangerous place, Mike. I'm going to tell you something. Mm-hmm. It's not too often that I begin to see a man and I begin to fear for his life. You feel what I'm saying? Like, by where the things that he says, it starts to make me wonder. Like, there's the mental health aspect of it that he's discussed, but this is a black man saying a lot of things, quite frankly, you know, Mike, that to entities and establishments are very, very dangerous. And it seems like any time we have somebody speak out in that manner, whether it be musically somebody like a Prince or Michael Jackson or a Ray Charles, James Brown, or politically or activism wise with a Marcus Garvey or um, Malcolm Martin, it, it's just, it makes you worry. And it's like, and this is why I'm worried. It's like, what, what's what's your end cause and your goal by saying all of this? What's the direction? What's the vision? What's the purpose? What's your soliloquy? What's your elevator speech, your mission statement? Because it all appears to be so loosely placed together that it is tough to piece it all together to support you. Listening to the interview, right? it sounds like to answer your question as far as what's the end game. He made it a point to say that for every black entertainer or, you know, uh, athlete, whatever, they have, you know, somebody from the J squad that is on their contract, right? 
And I think that, you know, his mission in that sense was, you know, to change those things in a way where, you know, either we should be able to, or, you know, black people should be able to have folks from the J squad under contract as well, or, you know, build up to the point where we're on each other's contracts without any of that involvement on every single thing. I mean, is that a fair assessment? Uh, it's just, it's too much? It's too much, but yes. Let me get to these super chats real quick. Mad Max says, Mike, no, Ebro is trash, and uh, New York has been trying to get these guys out. They bought and paid for it. Well, why can't, once again, this is similar to the conversation that Kanye's having, or Ye's having. Why can't New York get them out? It's the people, right? <laughs> Okay, so let's so let's go so let's go into some of Kanye's like where the money train follows diatribe. Okay. Okay. Why do you think Nas's source shared information with us? So there is some connective thread to it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So Ye's not wrong with some of the dots, like like that that whole who has the money and controls the narrative of who says what. Well, that's part of the reason why Nas's sources are willing to share information with us because they kind of want to start gauging the temperature of other outlets that they know aren't controlled monetarily by certain factions, Mike. Yeah. Correct or not. Correct. And let me ask now, you this. we are this. actually a Sit. Black-owned institution that is actually Black-owned. And, and so... Is, it is for the people. And it's run, ran by the people. Um, You know, let me ask you this, since you're speaking to the artists. Why do you think... Andre 3000 doesn't put out music. Why do you think Lauren Hill doesn't put out music? You know what I'm saying? Do you think that these people work this hard to get to a certain point and get to a certain level and they love music and then they just stop? I think there's some things here when it comes to lack of, you know, it's contracts. Let's just keep it real, you know, without it's being funny. long and drawn out. Well, see, but this is what I'm saying. So I want all the people who were in here saying, like, it wasn't like in, like, the money talk coming, you know, I guess from the source. It's like, well, understand this. Everybody else's talk is a money talk, too, even if you don't recognize it. Like, oh, the whole Andre and Lauren yeah. not recording, that's money talk. Yeah, they got okay? a business to, to run. Right. Correct. And Lauren's so not that's out here saying. doing these shows only, only, for free. Only Nas, only Nas gets audited on this circumstance. It's like, oh, no, don't talk about money and sales and numbers when it comes to him. It's like, no, we play this game with everybody else. Like, what? what did, what's his name say? Only dudes moving units. M. Pimp, Pimp and Juice. Us. And us. When he says it, it's fly and it's okay. But if Nas's source tells me, like, hey, like, we just wanted to reflect. Not we got to blow people out of the box, but we wanted to reflect. It's like, right. no, no, no. I don't like how the source is talking. It's like, are y'all crazy? Like, <laughs> are y'all crazy? Like, I don't even believe some of the stuff that I've read in this chat today, Mike. Man, like, Max is a super like, chat. Like, from some of our most notable followers, like, it's a joke. It's like, no, nah, guys, this ain't no podcast, like, where we're pulling up with false information. This is viable shit going on. And the way that they're dismissing it is the shit that Nas's camp and Ye is talking about in this interview. Look at like how we behave about these circumstances. That's like fair. I'm irate right now, Mike. Mad Max of the Super Chat says uh, they got C <laughs> C the Devil and Ebro running New York radio, and they not even from here. That's why we turned them off to uh, two bozos. I'm only checking for MCs on Flex. That's real, cause you know what? That's Hold one on. thing. And you know what? Atlanta has started to do this, and I got love for Tigger. Tigger is a legend. But it's like a part of me as a person, homegrown, born and raised in Atlanta, I don't love it. And not to mention with the whole Falcons theme song and stuff with the uh, routine thing. It's like, I don't love it. I don't. And, and so I can feel your pain. With the fact that, you know, you got Ebro and Charlemagne out there running New York radio. And New York is not supporting that. I dig it. Uh, Kendall Outlaw with the Super Chat says $6 billion. 
and it appears that he's living in misery. Um, Yorel says, yay, LOL. He, he does make good points. You can't be anti-Semitic as, as the word is rooted to Afro uh, in theology sense. That, that they define themselves. LOL. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Um, Mad I'm Max also says, here, saw the interview. Yay, clearly um, subsidized by the Republican Party. He is just regurgitating Republican rhetoric. Now, his comments on, um, what is this, uh, fly out, uh, and, oh, fly out in the, tor in the Torah community, <laughs> I'm just going to say there's truth in Babel. He's talking about uh, the J guys. We got 36 Chambers says, Ye had a, a follow-up video recording where he understood why Nori apologized. But he doubled down and said that the media is taking a lot out of context. Uh, Mad Max also says, uh, why are we fearful? Ye didn't lie about those people, um, the impersonators, who say that they follow the Torah. They, they mafia own hip-hop and extort rappers. It's fact. Uh, I think that this is the thing, Mad Max. A lot of people... Nori, what happened was really... And this is what... Ye seemed to say in his response about Nori apologizing. I think Nori jumped into something that was, that was too big for him. Um, I think my only issue is the fact that it didn't come across as honest when he talked about how hurt he was about the George Floyd comments. Uh, because I remember Sunday when this thing was airing Nori was on Twitter talking about that this um, broadcast is bigger than, this, in, than you know, Sunday football. Um, I think that is even when we talk, even when we do our lives, if there's something that we discussed or if we had somebody on the interview that said something that was out of pocket or that we felt wouldn't go well or we felt the way about it, we're live. It's different. This wasn't live could have easily went back and edited that stuff out if that hurt you to that degree of what you're saying when you got on Hot 97 and apologized and when you got on The Breakfast Club and apologized. Now, not saying that... Not saying that the apology's wrong. It just doesn't seem truthful that you were as hurt as you said you were. You know what I'm saying? Because if that were the case, we never would have even heard that section. So that part of it's problematic, and I think that is really, we're in an era now, media-wise, and from a social media standpoint, you can't lie to the people. And when you lie to the people, and the people catch you in a lie like that, it does hurt the brand. And I'm sure people will still watch Drink Champs. And another part that I didn't love that he said on The Breakfast Club either, he said, this is Drink Champs, not think champs and it's like okay so now we're just gonna play dumb when we got serious topics on the table you knew who you were inviting you knew what he was on what he was talking you know what time it was you know what i'm saying like is it just gonna be a platform now where people just drink be merry and crack jokes and you know pick this rapper that rapper if that if that's what it is cool Stay in your lane, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It's a shift. It's a shift. I don't it's know. It's all messy. Like that whole situation. Like that whole situation. Because it's like, I mean, I've gone off the handle a few times on here, I think. Pretty certain you've edited some of those comments. Mike, you've I made have. comments a time or two. I'm sure I have. No, I know because I've watched you go back and edit them. It's like, hold on, where's that part where Mike, Mike said such and such and be gone? <laughs> I'll be like, no, Mike, I very vividly remember Mike saying, be like, no, I ain't going to say nothing because, you, well, you're auditing our audience and the situations and the circumstances of it and understanding that, well, what we do here, you know, until today apparently is credible journalistic work. It doesn't get questioned too much until I actually come with a source and get questioned <laughs> by people in here. 
you know, it's been credible to the point that I got a source. This shit crazy. Um, but we actually do credible journalistic work and it's fair and unbinding. And part of keeping it fair and unbinding is taking out the shit that seems like it's skewed in one direction or another if we fall that way. Because in the course of going live, your personal feelings and emotions can take over. Exactly. And especially, and, and even on top of that, to piggyback on that, you have to take out certain things that could be spun a certain way as well. Because even with that that um, diatribe that Ye was on, that wasn't even a topic of the conversation. He was actually trying to build his point about Virgil from that. So that could have easily what, been cut that, out. That, okay, so Mike, that's the troubling part about all this and even the framework of the environment. I'm going to say this again. If you were to just take a normal individual, all right, and one of their best friends died, okay, and they got separated from their wife and their kids, and all of this stuff plays out for public consumption, you're going to be surprised when that person says something controversial. Yeah. This is after they already have a, a history, history. <laughs> of, of saying controversial things, Mike, and having mental health issues before the friend dying in the divorce and being separated from your kids. The person was known for saying controversial things and having mental health issues, and you were expecting what? And it appears that it was being used for ratings on top of that. And then, you know, what I don't like, it appears that after all this goes down, you just jump ship. I was drunk. What? I don't like that. You know, because really... Don't like the, I, don't, I don't like the built-in drink champs excuse of I was drunk. It I almost feels like that's already the built-in excuse if we ever get some shit to go down on our platform. It feels like it's like the precipice of how they created that format to say, oh, well, if they mess up and say it here, exactly. we can literally blame it on the alcohol, blame exactly. it on the weed. You know, right. I, I'm going to be real, man. And, you know, as a, as a person who has had um, alcoholism in my family, I didn't like when they had Lamar Odom on there, who was a recovering addict, and had this man drinking on there. I, I'm not going to lie. I lost a lot of respect for the platform that day. You know what I'm saying? I did. And I, I haven't really been watching it as much since. Unless somebody like Pharrell or Ye or somebody like that gets on there. But this right here, man. It's like it didn't even have to be handled like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Just say you messed up. Say you went out there and was like, you know, we really was out here trying to, you know, have a provocative interview. And get our ratings up. Or whatever and it went wrong and for that i apologize but to sit here and act like you were so hurt by this this and this that could have easily been edited out an interview that clearly wasn't even recorded in that day or live or anything it's just dishonest it is and i got love for nori and i'm just being real i mean if if i don't say it like this you know everybody knows that we just keep it real and i'm sure the fans feel the same way or mad with the super chat says peace. Nori should have never apologized. If he's a journalist, then he has to take a hit that comes with it. Gail King never apologized. You know, I'm glad you mentioned Gail King. Oprah Winfrey has never apologized for her hit piece on Michael Jackson. Ever. And this is somebody who the Jackson family welcomed into their home after Michael's passing. Michael's mm -hmm. interview that he did with Oprah Winfrey took her career to new heights. She has never apologized for that hit piece that was on him 10 years after his death. So yes, you're right. Maybe Nori should have stood somewhat firm with somebody that he made a decision to come in and interview, and they already had a disclaimer before it. What are we doing, man? Like, that's not a good look, man. When cloud chasing goes wrong is what it appears to be. <laughs> Mad Max says, I'm not scared for Kanye. Um, once you watch the interview, you could tell that Ye was sticking to his talking points. He's controlled opposition. Uh, he's too, va too valuable. Um, Urell says, uh, did y'all see when they um, brought in Steve Rifkin near the end of the interview? Yes. I I did. No, I missed that because the interview got taken down. <laughs> Well, I was in the middle of finishing Well, this up. is what Ye did. Steve Rifkin came in, 
And yeah, it's what like, does Steve Rifkin have to do with any of this? No, do you no, no, get no, no, what no, I'm no, saying no. about all of these it's, spaces it's, and these circumstances no, 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 no. and situations? It's proving his point. I think Steve was trying to stay in the back. Yeah, he's like, no, come on, Steve. You're one of my favorite people. Brought him on camera. Hugged him out or whatever, and this and that, and told him to sit down and wanted to stay and talk. But Steve's like, no, nah, I got a flight to catch or whatever, and left. So I guess he thought he was going to be a fly on the wall, and Gay was like, no, nah, come on. I want people to see this. <laughs> LP with the Super Chat says, um... Anybody who leans one way politically is being uh, disingenuous to real free thinking. No way an apolitical person only sees the wrong in direction. Uh, 36 Chambers also says drink champs is uh, bad for the culture because it glorifies being sloppy and spreading gossip. It takes away from the music in some cases. Hmm. Well... I think we can end on that point. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. I don't even know. I, there's so much to unpack here, but I'll say this. Okay, so here's the thing about you gotta it. You got to stand like, on your content. That's it. That's it. You just got to stand on your content. Listen, listen, though. It's like you can't. It's so problematic, Mike. I don't even know where to begin. I don't know if to start with Nori's problematic side or Ye's problematic side. Um like, well, let's talk about journalism. So let's talk about the Nori side of things because I keep we've been hearing doing people, all day today. That ain't been working. I just keep hearing people saying stuff like, "Well, why you give a certain person a platform?" Blah blah blah. Well, with that attitude, we never would have seen uh, Minister Farrakhan on Donahue, never. And you know, I gotta applaud people for like Kanye said or like they said for actually giving a platform. But you didn't have Donahue out here apologizing for bringing the KKK on his show. That You know what I'm saying? Like, he gave them a platform. He interviewed them. And no, that's what it was. A, what's the other Farrakhan interview that we talked about? Uh, Mike Wallace. Yeah, the Mike Wallace interview. And what did I tell you? It's like, what other journalist of that level was about to give Farrakhan an interview? That's exactly. why I've always given Mike Wallace credit for doing that interview, exactly. even though I don't feel like some of the rhetoric and the discourse was appropriate. I was literally just trying to frame it to get people to understand who the hell else, what other journalist is giving Farrakhan this type of audience? Like, you know what type of audience Mike Wallace draws in? Like, but from his demographic as a journalist? You get what I'm saying? And so when people miss, like, like these parts of things that exist, it, like, it, it, all, it all just gets lost. But this is the thing. When you invite somebody of that magnitude or somebody like a, a, a Farrakhan or even the KKK or, or um, um, uh, Khalid Muhammad, you better be ready to be a journalist. You can't be sitting there sloppy drunk when you're talking to one of the more polarizing figures of this era. You know what I'm See, saying? This is this is well, this literally is what I mean about, you know, about our I, journalistic te and tech. Yeah. Well, so, well, let's connect all of these things again. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Ice Cube's sellout tweet to start this show about how he got labeled by certain factions and fractions. Let's go to the Nas media slander. And now let's go to Nori bringing Ye on. Journalistic integrity has something to do with all three of these things. That's why I wanted to talk about all three of these things, because I have a source that is giving me viable inter information and my journalistic integrity is to share the things that the source is comfortable sharing on a platform where they feel like it's going to be fair and unbiased, okay? Yeah. So the same reason the source is coming here is the same way in the same rationale for Ye going to drink champs. This source isn't going to skew me like the other sources are. And so even if you don't agree with Kanye, well, he got skewed from a source he trusted. He did. That's how Nas's source ended up talking to me and sharing the things that she shared because it's been too many people doing that. So Noriega, in that regard, is no different than the media that has slayed his homeboy Nas many a time. 
You're right. With that type of lack of journalistic integrity, this is why I wanted to share all these things again. It all ties in, Mike, in the media, in the market, and the journalistic integrity has something to do with it. The next time I pull up in this space, I better not see people that are dedicated to this chat question in my source anymore. Like, period. Well, you know, we wouldn't lie to the people, you know, at the end of right. the day. Right. We but wouldn't lie to the people. When you question in the source, you are thereby questioning me because the source is speaking to me. So you're telling me that I'm not talking to a verified person? Well, so now you're questioning me as a journalist because that comes back on me as a journalist when our, people from our fan base are saying that my source is incredible. Do you understand how foolish and ridiculous you sound right now? Well, you know, like you've been pulling up on us faithfully and you get, you know, you don't get to do that because you're taking you. away from the hard work that I just put in, yeah. in a matter of moments, you were taking all of my hard work away with your rhetoric. That's what Ye was talking about. Yeah. And you it's know what? It's going to be interesting to see what they do with this, Mike. Didn't it, he say that? I was just about to say, it was very interesting towards the end of the interview. He said, I can't wait to see how y'all edit this. Letting everybody know there should be an editing process here. So, you guys just put this thing out, huh? You know who you're talking to. You know what right. y'all covered. You know what right. y'all have covered. Go back and do the work and actually edit this thing properly so that all of the good stuff that was in there, which was a whole lot, I would say at least 95% doesn't get lost in the little BS that could have just been taken out, man. Do the work. No, hold on. And then, but no, hold but on. not even just saying that, like, yo, to sit there and say, oh man, I was lit. Really, man? Were you lit even after the interview and while you were uh no. while you were tweeting during football? Come on, man. So listen. So listen to what I'm saying. <clears throat> we might have some plants in here. I'm sure. Like, you feel me? Like some of the people that are saying they're staunch supporters. You feel me? That's possible, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. You're here to make it seem like you're a staunch supporter. But when I pull up with this information, you feel what I'm saying? Like, that's how this game goes too, Mike. And so, like, I'm just peeping and auditing everything. And it's like, y'all give yay credence when Nori has to take the video down, Mike. Like, like you make him valid. And so yeah. as much as I don't agree with him, as much as I don't like the angles, the movement, the motion, it's like, well, you're not invalidating him with your behavior and your rhetoric on your side. Because guess what? Your journalistic integrity is not intact. And it feels like it feels like this um, George Floyd family lawsuit for two hundred and fifty million doesn't sound like a real lawsuit to me, in my opinion, because. It's, it sounds like it's just trying to shut him up. Because I don't understand how the first thing you're not doing is, A, doing that same thing to Candace Owens and her documentary, which he was speaking on. B, Revolt, who actually aired the, in, you, the interview, Drink Champs, whatever. Like, how does all of that get evaded? But the individual no. who made a statement gets hit with 250? Y'all are just trying to make him shut up. Hold on, hold on. I, I want to scale this back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. You may not feel like Noriega is a credible journalist. He but is. what I am saying, but no, listen to what I'm saying. Because of how the media is going to take Kanye's information, those people are no, like the, the people that Kanye normally take, they're not any better, Mike. Like they're better journalists, but they're not more credible right. because they're going to take his information and skew it, exactly. at least on drink champs, even though Noriega is not what you would say a quote-unquote credible journalist, he doesn't have to worry about the skew. And so when Noriega does something like take it down, well, that's the same type of censorship that Ye was trying to avoid by going that route. You know, there's, so, a, there's a so moment. So I'm being very clear on what I'm saying. To piggyback on that, to piggyback on that real quick. There's a moment in sports I'll never forget. You remember when Beast Mode used to never sit there and interview with anybody or whatever? He wouldn't even talk to these folks. Deion Sanders came down there with a microphone. He's like, hey, primetime chopped it up. That's what Nori represents for these artists. That's what Joe Button represents for these artists. They'll sit down and talk to them because those are their peers. You know what right. I'm saying? And when you pull something like this, it's like, really, man? I mean, I know publicly, yeah, say, you know, I get it, whatever, whatever. 
But you think he gonna sit down there again? Because at no. the end of the interview, Nori was like, "Man, you always got an outlet here, drink chance, whatever, whatever." You think he's gonna come for part four? No. Jay Shore says everyone, uh, yay, gets shaded by one of these uh, W institutes. Uh, goes and gets a Grammy or invites gets invited to a fashion week. He goes on a tamper, temper tantrum. We're not doing the drive-by pro-black Byron Allen hustle anymore. I get that frustration. Where he's saying that Ye is only black, pulls the black car when convenient. It comes across as that. It comes across as the boy to cry wolf thing. When things get real crazy, then it's like, you know, come help me out. I could see someone feeling that way. Uh, Jay Short says, Conan wouldn't let uh, Bono do that. Uh, Telemundo wouldn't let Bad Bunny do that. But our media isn't built to protect us. It's there, uh, it's there, it's it's there to validate, then destroy. Gotcha. <sighs> so, so you don't have to like Kanye, because I don't right now. Mm -hmm. But do you know how empowering it is that this video has been taken down? Yeah, it proves everything that he said correct. It's proven everything that he's saying is correct. And Mike, what and is he I talking believe about? He knew this was going to talking happen. about money. Mike, at the end of the day, you know what he's talking? He's talking about money and numbers. The same way Ice Cube and Nas. You get what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what era. It doesn't matter what artist. It doesn't matter how crazy you think they are or may not be. They're playing a certain game where numbers and money equal power. Yeah. Ye knows it. Nas knows it. Ice Cube knows it. It's all about how it gets utilized and played in your favor. The media helps control that narrative. That's what Ye's talking about. That's what Nas' source is talking about. That's what Ice Cube's tweet is talking about. I think Ye knew that they were going to take this down. Oh, I think, yeah. He, I think he knew when he sat like, there. Yeah. He, he knew. I think he knew. he right. knew exactly how this was going to turn out. He was like, they're going to put the pressure on these guys, and these guys are going to fold. He knew that. And then I'm and, and guess what? And I'm gonna be right. And I'm not gonna and look so right. crazy. Now am I? Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what did he say wrong? What do you want him to do? His delivery like, is like, off. No, no, no. It's like it's like you don't have to like Ye, you don't have to agree with Ye. But what do you want him to do when he can't go to drink champs and speak speak freely? Right. You can't even go on a platform where they just sit there and take shots and talk like, about, think about it. Think about talk this. about all You're kind of shit. Talk about all kind of crazy shit, Coop. Right. Get drunk You're, and talk no, about all kind of this. crazy shit. I'm the person that got deleted. <laughs> you got a room full of people getting drunk and high all the time, and my words are the dangerous thing about this room? <laughs> <laughs> crazy, right? Mm, mm, mm. Let's get up out of here, man. Great show. Uh, I'm looking yeah. forward to Friday, man. We got Jeezy Friday. We got um, Armani Caesar. The Liz 2 is dropping Friday. And I'm sure we're going to have some more updates on some uh, more material, more music. But, yeah, great insight. I mean, we could talk about this stuff all day, man. We appreciate y'all joining us, too. Uh, yeah, we got I'm a, gonna try to, uh, look, we got I'm a gonna super chat from Africa. I'm going to pull back up my source and see if she watched the show. <laughs> we got a super chat from Africa that says, uh, Ye wants black folks to think for themselves. His mental state is overshadowing his uh, conservative views. You know, again, man, uh, I was listening to Star. Shout out to Star. I know he don't like shout outs. But he said something that was right, man. It's like everybody's on something, man. Like you drink coffee, you know what I'm saying? Take a, you know, take a hit, a smoke, uh, whatever. Like, so to hold that against a person or hold that over his head, it's unfair. Like he told hey, Cuomo, he was like, you work out this morning? <laughs> hey, look here. Just real quick, Mike. Love me more meticulous. I've been reading your comments. I just don't know how else to tell you. You're just wrong. Like, like that's it. That's what I mean. It's like I'm done talking because it's like I can't argue with somebody that's just fundamentally wrong and don't see the vision of everything that I just laid out. And when you're sitting up here talking about before I bring you a source, I need to prove myself as credible. It's like, no, I don't. You've been pulling up to this show for two and a half years. That is my credibility. That's part of why the source is able comfortable talking to me because they have seen us talking fairly and honestly. Me and Mike speaking fairly and honestly for two and a half years is yeah, how I got I the source. Yeah, I would hope that us 
coming that up is here. That is the credibility. And, That's what yeah. I'm saying. And again, you don't the have credibility to. Credibility is the fact that me yeah. and Mike have been speaking honestly and truthfully, not just about him, but about all these things. Yeah, I, I am mean, the credibility. I would Mike hope that we put in the work. We didn't just pop. hip hop. Yeah, I would hope that we put in the work. I, I mean, we didn't just right. Pop that's up what yesterday. I'm saying. No, when when people have been following us, are sitting up here questioning whether my source is valid. It's like I've been valid to you up until today, and all of a sudden I'm not valid. That's wrong, and we don't have anything else really to discuss further. Well, y'all have a good evening. Y'all have a good night.